Hi, everyone, and welcome to another SENS Wellness Webinar. I'm Susan Greeley, the National Director of Wellness Services at Castle Conley Private Health Partners. And as we let people log in this evening, I always start by just giving some um, reminders that we will be recording this webinar this evening and that will be mailed out to everybody after um, in the next few days with some sense wellness tips and reminders. So stay on the lookout for that. And during the discussion this evening, please do submit questions either via the chat or the Q&A. We would love to get to all questions and really make it an engaging discussion this evening. Um, so yeah, as people log on, I'm just going to be chatting here with my guests this evening. And um, again, as people join in, we'll give them another minute and literally get started here. So, okay, um, welcome. I will get started for this SENS Wellness webinar on reframing wellness in the context of a challenging time. I'm Susan Greeley, the National Director of Wellness Services at Castle Conley Private Health Partners. And um, thank you for everyone who's joined us this evening. It's um, for those who are joining for the first time, I do like to say that these wellness webinars are intended to educate and support all of our members. And it's also my goal to inspire and empower everyone to make positive lifestyle choices and support your overall well being. And to do so, I like to provide some really tangible tools as well. So here we are in October of 2020, hard to believe, and it has been quite the wild ride this year, as we all know. And a lot of people, I think at this point, are feeling even more anxious about their health. They're nervous about the upcoming long winter months and supporting their immune systems, thinking about how to stay active. So I felt that it's a, a really good time to actually talk about how we reframe wellness in the context of this challenging time and how we approach it to support our overall wellness um, during the winter time. So for tonight's discussion, I'm happy to introduce my guest who is a fitness and wellness expert named Joe Bach. So Joe is the founder and CEO at Bach Concierge Fitness, which he founded as Mobile Fitness Group back in 2015 in both Los Angeles and New York City. So he began his personal, uh, this business, when his personal training business became so successful that he had to outsource clients to his fellow training peers. His company's mission is truly to transform the health of his clients while also transforming both the personal training and wellness industries to meet clients where they are and when they have time without any sort of gym fees. So Bach fitness experts are personal trainers, yoga and Pilates instructors that come to you. Joe holds a Bachelor of Science in Finance and Public Relations from Syracuse University. And he previously worked as a, a, fine, a professional investment professional for Fortune 500 companies before starting this business. His true passion is helping people achieve their wellness goals and providing an impeccable customer experience. So with all that said, I'm very happy um, I have Joe here with me this evening. So Joe, thank you for being with me and I'll let you take over. Thank you so much, Susan. It's so nice to be here and thank you all for um, listening. I hope that I can answer some questions and dive deeper into some arenas of wellness that maybe you're not so aware of even, but also just even I know in our own client experiences, Sometimes we have a discrete amount of time with a client, whether it be in a group setting or a private setting, and we don't always get to cover all of the areas of wellness that are separate from exercise. Um, so I know that we'll be diving into various things uh, today that hopefully should be interesting. And as, as Susan mentioned, feel free to use the chat box to ask questions real time as you have them. But um, so some background on uh, what Bach has been up to kind of piggybacking onto what Susan said Pro for five years prior to COVID we did personal training and yoga and Pilates at people's homes in New York City and in Los Angeles and uh, when COVID hit we 
like many other fitness concepts, we brought our program onto virtual. So we are now training uh, most of our clients, even privately on, in a, on a virtual basis. Some in-person stuff has opened up gratefully in the last month or so in both New York and Los Angeles. So we're back to in-person, socially distanced, masked on, off and outdoors training. But the real, I think, hopefully silver lining of COVID has been that we started a live stream group fitness program that is totally free. Um, we've got 23 classes a week that range from uh, HIT to yoga, strength training, stretching, breath work, meditation, um, dance, Pilates, bar. So um, one of the things we'll be talking about here tonight is that the exercise portion of wellness really is not one size fits all. You know, it's, it's kind of, um, it's up to you to try different things. And we all, I was saying to Susan earlier today, you know, if, if I, people love spinning and, and God bless. Um, but if, if I did more than one spin class a month, I would probably drive myself crazy and be bored. Um, I can't run on a treadmill, but I do like to run outside. Uh, and I think Susan was agreeing with me even earlier that I would, I love to ride my bike, uh, as dangerous as it, as it is around New York city, but, uh, even in the winter it's, um, I, I mitten up, I, I wear my hat, I layer up and as you, as you get moving, it's really nice to do, especially on a nice sunny day, even if it's only 30 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So, um, what else? So we also have a lot of mothers and, and, and fathers and, and busy professionals that take our live stream group fitness. And we, we were hearing feedback that they can't always make the class times that they want to as they are live sessions. So we launched a video on demand platform a few weeks ago where folks can come in and um, access our, our, our past class library and all those different formats that I mentioned earlier and just watch them and follow along and exercise whenever they want to. But really the live stream along with the, the live stream has just allowed us to connect with people from around the country, around the world. We're, we're having people uh, in our classes from every continent. It's just been actually, aside from the exercise portion that is really positive and uh, great, it's just been really nice to connect with people and get to know people literally around the world. I've expanded my friend base by by hundreds of people in the last few months, which has been really, really nice. So um, yeah, so I, I know Susan has a bunch of questions for me and um, I, I, can, I can certainly dive into there, but Susan, is this a good spot to, to fire one away? You're on mute. Thank you, that's a first for me. Sorry about that. Thank you, Joe, yes, I'm, um, it's, it's bound to happen in the world of Zoom these days. So. In any case, Joe, I, I find that fascinating how we are being connected with others in new, different ways than you never would have expected. Um, so two things I wanna ask off the bat is, what does wellness mean to you, Gizit, and what is your philosophy behind reframing wellness in these challenging times? Sure, sure. Well, I, I've historically mentioned wellness in the context of four pillars. Uh, nutrition, exercise, sleep, and stress. But actually today, I've, I've thought about adding a fifth pillar, especially as we work from home, uh, which is posture. Um, how are, <laughs> Susan sits up straight as I, as I say that. <laughs> how, and you may notice if I step back, I am at a standing desk, um, yeah. which I have learned the hard, I often learned the hard way uh, when, when, I, when I learned in my life that you know for if you're if you're sitting like this for a long period of time and you become older than 30 things start to not feel so good anymore and um so how so what does wellness mean to me you know kind of checking in on those five pillars all day long uh that might sound ambitious for some but mm -hmm. trying to be conscious of what do i need at the moment how do i feel bring consciousness of how am i breathing Am I making water easily accessible? Do I have healthy, nutritious foods in the house? Am I making time to exercise? And we can really dive deep into how to do all these different things. But 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm starting to go down paths that Susan, feel free to reel me back in, but right. kind of checking in on those five different pillars and you may not be perfect on all of them all the time, but bringing consciousness to them in whatever ways that fit your psychological profile. I don't mean that to be a technical term, but everyone respond, like I've got sticky notes that you can't see that are all in front of me that are just daily reminders of things that, right. you know, uh, what works for me, or maybe you have a calendar reminder for you or, and in terms of exercise, I often like to recommend to people, Hey, put it in your calendar that from X to Y, I'm going to be working out and, and treat it just like a work meeting. I, I, no, I, I can't, I can't do other things during this time. Um, this is my hour to work out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what you got to make things, certain things a priority if you do want to achieve them. And I, I know that's, I don't, I know that's hard with our lives, uh, depending on what's going on around you, but, um, bringing yeah. consciousness to all those different arenas can really, that's wellness. It's not just exercise, which is often. Oh, where absolutely. It's, it's all encompassing. I have to bring it back to those pillars though. And of course, that's what I focus on. However, reiterate, you started with nutrition, exercise, and posture. And what are the other two that we need to focus on during the day, every day? Stress management and sleep. There we go. Okay, exactly. That brings it full circle with wellness. And I found that that was really back to the tangible tips that I love. And you, I don't even know if you're aware that you said that, but having not just drinking, when I say drink, make sure you drink throughout the day, as far as nutrition, having water accessible, that's the difference. It's not just say drink it, but have it accessible. Um, breathing and posture. So one of the, as part of that stress management, sorry, as I knock over, um, uh, back to the, the breathing, how do you incorporate breath work into your, you know, daily routines? It's a great question. Um, at the beginning of quarantine, when, so our, just to be totally frank and honest, which that's, that's who I am. Um, our business, as you might imagine, was, was shut down when, when COVID uh, began. We lost about 80% of our business, as I'm sure many on the call did. And um, so that, I'm not a person, you know, knock on wood, and uh, I'm lucky for it. I don't really struggle generally with my mental health. But in the beginning of quarantine, I really did. Um, I have no shame. I was stressed right. out, had anxiety. Um, and I had been practicing breath work, meaning going to a class where all you do is have a guide um, purposely coach you in how to breathe. It's really with, with the right guide. It's really not, a, it's a simple practice. Um, I had been doing that. I live in Brooklyn. Uh, I had been doing that in person before quarantine once a week or so. Um, and then just like our business did, a lot of, uh, there was a, a breath work company called Frequency that I would highly recommend to people, frequencymind.com. Um, all their breathwork classes got brought online to Zoom. So I was taking a breathwork class every day and the method of breathwork that I was primarily practicing called holotropic breathwork um, was a really, one of its purposes is to relieve trauma, but also, and it really has an amazing uh, energetic effect in bringing trauma to the surface, but also healing trauma just through purposeful breath. Uh, and I'm not a coach in that arena, but someone on our platform uh, is. We have a breathwork class every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern that is free that I would highly recommend you check out. But sorry, Susan, to circle back. So what one of the things you learn in these breathwork classes is it's just to kind of tune into how, how am I breathing all day long? Um, which is a sign of if you're breathing rapidly, that's kind of fight or flight. If you're able to slow down your breathing, four second inhales, four second exhales, there's such a deep connection between mind and body. And that is a way through the breath to control our nervous system and uh, really de-stress us. If we can consciously breathe nice and slowly you can even, I can even feel it as I'm, as I'm doing it. I, my, my voice gets a little deeper that I calm down a little bit. 
Right. No, it's extremely important. And I bring that up as well, because even though we're talking exercise, and I think the expectation when you see you're talking about exercise is really quite the opposite. And yet I love to point out just the importance and how to tie that in to the overall, to a daily wellness routine. And it's great to get rubbed up and get cardio exercise. However, the power of that breath for stress management is just tremendous. And I think more people are recognizing that. And I love, and the reason I pointed that out too, is because I think it's very unique to you and your company that you offer that type of class, not just HIIT training and Pilates and other that, but true breath work class. And so I would encourage people to check it out because I think it is new to a lot of people. Um, okay. So switching gears and let's say over the last six months, you have been very sedentary, which I think this applies to a lot of us, unfortunately. How at this point, as the days are getting shorter, unfortunately, um, do you have tips for starting an exercise routine now and like how to actually exercise and what are some tips for success to do that now, um, particularly indoors? Some people are going back to the gym, but most are in the home, okay? so. Yeah, what's your best recommendation for getting started and proactively before winter sets in? Yeah, that's a great question, Susan. I, I think part of what our, whether it be personal or group training, part of the value we add with those services to people is just accountability to do it. Um, so you don't, I'm not, I don't mean this to be a sales pitch for us, but Having an accountability partner, whether that be someone you live with, a friend, a, a coworker, um, a coach that you hire and, you know, pay to help you. Like, you know, I'm not good at graphic design, so I hire someone to help me with that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, and, you know, I am, you know, and not everyone needs that, but like, you know, I don't need help with my fitness routine. I'm self-motivated, but I do need help in other arenas and I spend money to get help when, where I need it. Um, but making a plan, you know, I often, we always, when we start with a new client, try to set measurable goals. And I encourage people to, we're not, we're not, okay, so say that your goal, just for example, is to lose 30 pounds. Okay, that's a good macro goal, but what are the lifestyle, very granular micro detail lifestyle more tactics actually even that I need to do to get there. So um, are we setting a goal of let's work out four times a week? Um, that could be a nice granular goal that gets you to your three months down the road goal. But what are the lifestyle things that I can do right now to, to plan and achieve that success? And I would also encourage people Getting outdoors and getting vitamin D is, is another piece of wellness that is super important. Um, even just the fresh air and walk, walking, whether it be taking a, a Zoom meeting, for example, you don't have to be on Zoom necessarily for every meeting. Maybe, you know, maybe you take, you put your headphones in and take a, take a walk as you have the meeting rather than, um, you know, being standing still for an hour. That's just an example of a, of a little bit of a hack, but. Um, I think it's a, as far as reframing things, I think that that's important. And because so much has fundamentally changed for all of us in our daily lifestyle, I think it's important and acceptable to say, you know, that I'm going to be walking as I'm listening or anything like that. And I don't think that comes naturally to a lot of people. And so I love pointing that out is, you know, just rethinking how we do it, even our space inside and outside and the times that we do it instead of me separating work and, you know, walks, do it simultaneously if that's what it takes, right? I think that that's um, just a new way to look at it and very important way, particularly in the wintertime when we have such shortened days and, you know, after work hours going outside in the pitch black is not necessarily an option. <laughs> yeah, and it's the circle back to a bit on what you said, Susan, about your space. You know, I live in New York City in a small space and our, our program is designed, 
we only have one of the 23 classes a week that you need any equipment for. The one for the other 22, you need for yoga. It'd be nice to have a yoga mat, but other than that, um, all you need is the space of a yoga mat to join any of our classes. And then I, I'm encouraged. You'll see, like in my classes that I teach in particular, I'm, I'm encouraging people to say, "Oh." there's your coffee table. You could be doing some, what I, what are called dips, you know, working yeah. your triceps from the coffee table, or if it's sturdy enough, or if you have a chair, stepping up to the chair, stepping up, stepping down. Um, you could, I often encourage to add some resistance to exercise for those who need it. Take a reusable grocery bag or a backpack, fill it with books or canned goods. And then but as anyone who's moved their apartment before knows how heavy books are, um, that, that is a tremendous way to add resistance to exercise. So I know Amazon is tough right now in terms of buying dumbbells or kettlebells, but, um, rubber bands are available, but really we, we, sh most of our classes are body weight based and just okay. even tuning into those, learning some things you can do on your own. Well, I think it'd be very valuable for people. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So what are some of these key parts of wellness and exercise in particular that you find that people actually neglect? Yeah, Susan, a hundred percent, not a hundred percent, 90 percent of our clients could use more yoga and or stretching. Stretching, um, ah, okay. You know, um, and anybody who knows me or works with me knows that I uh, do my daily yoga, so that come, I understand that, and but stretching, do you have stretching classes and how does somebody, I think that that's hard for most people. It is. And um, yeah, how do you start stretching on your own? It's a great question. Yeah, so I, we do have stretching classes. I teach a stretching class Friday mornings at 7.30 Eastern, a.m. Eastern. Um, and I really actually started the class. I, I, I love yoga, but I'm not a yoga. I am a personal trainer. I'm not a yoga instructor. And I would just hear from my friends all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't feel comfortable in yoga class. I, I'm not flexible. I don't know what I'm doing. And so I kind of just, my stretching class is kind of just yoga by a different name, really, honestly. <laughs> and we're not flowing like in a typical yoga class. But I'm trying to clearly and articulate uh, maybe, you know, certainly no Sanskrit, but um, some of the skill, some of the people that I pay attention to that I learned from have a skill in communicating what could be complicated in a very simple way. Um, so um, that, that's really our yoga class, or excuse me, our stretching class uh, as separate from yoga. But even for me, I, I use yoga to unwind tension. I'm not there to do handstands and crazy stuff. I get m my fill of exercise. Otherwise, I'm there to just kind of do what do what my body needs for recovery. And most of our yoga classes are designed to do that. And really, we say to everyone, hey, you can even turn your camera off. Like you could be don't feel embarrassed. Sure. You wouldn't. Feel, right. Our instructors aren't going to embarrass you with your camera on, but even if, you know, take your camera off, do what you got to do. No, no one's judging you or watching you. It, there's really mm -hmm. a tremendous upside that can come from, you know, uh, we see a lot of our, our people that are, are into our intense exercise classes that are having trouble mobilizing their hips and shoulders. They're tight in their chest and back, and that can lead to injury over time. But mm -hmm. the best physical therapy I've ever done is yoga, honestly. I've done my physical therapy, acupuncture, chiropractor, you know, been through the ringer with certain injuries and yoga has been the thing that has healed me more than anything. Um, but back to, you know, what people neglect and saying that it was stretching, that's what I wanted to actually get out more and basically why, why is that bad to neglect stretching and, and what does, because I know most people do, if they only have limited time, I think that that's not the first thing they're going to do. So just understanding the why behind it, I think is very helpful. Yeah, I, I think so, so many of us, you know, I can't generalize for every single person, but so many of us are focused on the, um, the type A, the, the hard workout versus yeah. the recovery, you know, like, or just, you know, you've only, even uh, 
uh, you've only got so much time. So as soon as the class ends, boom, I'm back into my work call or my, my daughter or son or my, my spouse. Um, whereas to stretch as much as you need to does take some time. I, I would recommend, um, you know, maybe 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at noon, 10 minutes in the evening. And it's not oh, wow. that you're going to get to every single body part, but you're going to tackle the, the areas that your specific body needs most. Okay. Uh, and that can really add a lot of value and, and certainly benefit, especially if you're stretching before bed, then lead into a calm mind and calm body for sleep. Which we all know how imperative sleep is these days. And that takes me, my thoughts to our immune systems. And my next question or topic, um, what are some things you can do to keep your immune system strong heading into these dark winter flu ridden months? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and Susan, I, I may kick that back to you for the nutrition portion, but um, certainly nutrition is a, is a big piece, but uh, yes. blood flow is another one, exercise, releasing the proper, um, uh, I was about to say chemicals, and they are, but hormones in your body um, through sleep, exercise, proper nutrition, proper stress management, um, really the kind of those five pillars of wellness none of them necessarily more important than the other, but all of them taken in whole contribute to a healthy immune system, um, mm -hmm. breath work, exercise, and then, uh, certainly nutrition is a huge piece of that. Oh, I'm, you know, uh, with my background, of course, you know, I will say that it is number one, it's the foundation and, um, but, but not entirely, to be honest, I'm, not just a proponent of exercise. I also just tell people how imperative it is to move our bodies, get fresh air every single day for your immune system as well, for boosting your immune systems. So, but the sleep, I mean, it is all tied together. And so part of like tonight, what I really want to come across more than anything is to help people understand how important it is for your overall health and well-being to exercise because it will help you sleep better. Um, I also tell people it does improve their appetite and you're more likely to choose healthier foods once you've exercised, right? You're feeling good about having done something. So it's just the self-perpetuating cycle. However, the missing link is, you know, I'm overwhelmed, I'm in my small space or whatever it is, like working all day, like I said, how do I start? How do I get this? And I love your tangible tips. And I think just the fact that your company offers those free virtual online classes, because there are people who are missing that, missing the energy of being in an actual exercise class, or they've never taken one and they're intimidated. And it's a, right, I think, it, you know, that's very helpful for people on both ends of the spectrum that the newbies or the people who are simply missing it. So, um, go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, I, I don't know how I come off, but, um, I, you know, I, I'm told and I try to hire people that are really just down to earth, relatable, communicative people. We're never going to make someone feel bad or overwhelm them in an exercise class. If it's new to you, um, we're always going to try to offer modifications if you've got knee issues, hip issues, whatever it may be, foot issues. So, um, and we ask our participants at the beginning of every class, you know, either through the chat box or to verbalize, you know, if, if you have anything that we should know about, please let us know and we'll offer modifications. And, and also, also saying that we're just guides, you know, this is your workout. This is for you. However, I can help you. I would love to, but um, Nice during the class with anyone but yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We do have some really good questions coming in Joe and one back to the stretching just quickly. And because I, I think people are afraid of injury in general. I know I am and don't want to stretch a cold muscle. So is that true? This uh, members asking if it's safe to stretch a muscle that's not warmed up, like in the evening, it makes sense. You've been moving all day, hopefully. Um, but is it safe to, to stretch when your muscles aren't warm? That's a great question. Um, it, it depends on which stretch you're going for. So um, hamstrings are one that are typically, like if I was, I could, my hamstrings are tighter than they should be for a <laughs> professional. 
if I was to put my heel up on my desk right now, I'd probably pull my hamstring. So I would, my stretching class and yoga classes, whether you know it or not, are designed to take you through a warm up before you get into some of the more deep stretches. So um, for every body, that groin, hamstring, those are really kind of the only ones that I would be careful about. Otherwise, okay. um, one one stretch I love, especially work from home, is just put your hand at shoulder height on a wall and, and turn away and, and open up. And um, that's not something you're going to be at risk of pulling anything, for example. That's a great one. And also for the people who are sitting, this is the next question. Um, when you do sit all day and I think so that answers that's a simple doable stretch we just forget I think we forget and that said too when you're sitting all day what are some exercises that you can easily work in yeah is that Susan and you may not know is that um do you mean like post post sitting or like while sitting or like while sitting or was um you know, it's hard to say like what constitutes exercise when you're sitting all day, I, right? Like, is it adequate if I do five minutes of this or that? So what constitutes an adequate amount of exercise when you literally end up sitting as so many of our members do and people I work with on a daily basis sit between eight and 10 hours a day? Yeah. Maybe more. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, one thing that we've recommended to people in the past is set a timer or a calendar reminder that every hour you're getting up, maybe you're doing 10 air squats, maybe you're doing 10 push-ups, um, maybe you're, you're just doing 10 jumping jacks, um, something, you, you, there are little hacks that you can program throughout the day just to get the blood flowing, do some shoulder rolls. Um, I wouldn't even think about if you're just even doing these every hour interval hacks or just getting the, the body moving, blood flowing, that's terrific. I would highly recommend that. But I also, I would challenge you to try to figure out a way to program some discrete exercise time, whether it be a, a midday break or before or after work. Um, mm -hmm. It's not going to be quite enough to, to do those. Those are great for just kind of energizing the mind and body, making sure you're not stuck in a bad posture. Um, but some discrete, and then uh, back to where I started a, a standing desk and you can see there are, there are so many different models out at this point that, um, there are many options, but mine in particular, I'll show you it. It's, it's electronic. It goes up and down. So it's not that I'm standing all day. It's that <laughs> I stand and then at some point I get tired and I sit down and then but the, op the option to go back and forth all day long. Uh, is really good for hips and also maybe notice it's not just it's not just hips it's where is my, where is my eyes and therefore my neck mm -hmm. um, that is an important factor too you got to have yeah, that eye level be <laughs> sorry <Susan. laughs> check you you're making, right you're making me check in and adjust so many things oh no I lost you hang on I just had a technical difficulty I hear you fine. Oh, good. Okay. Lost it. Lost my visual. <laughs> I was all of a sudden seeing all of the questions because there we still have more questions coming in. Um, yeah, no, all of these check-ins with yourself are, are very, very helpful. And I think that that's the main thing. And again, back to the, the winter months and all that. Um, so a couple of the questions are coming in. They're sort of, um, you know, not all over the place, but like one is referring to, do you use any, or can you recommend any at home equipment? Absolutely. Be it um, a bike, elliptical, treadmill. I mean, obviously that is related to people's space and personal, you know, everybody has personal desire or like likes what they do. You don't you, you know, necessarily want the spin bike for you, but in general, yeah, if you have any tips or recommendations, people are always looking for specific recommendations. Absolutely. Um, I would, um, ho hopefully, you know, some people have different opinions about Amazon, but generally Amazon is a, is a nice way to get fitness equipment, especially if you have Prime, because 
shipping is generally free. And when you're ordering a 50 pound weight, that's a nice thing to have. Yeah, uh, but they do, they do have a nice uh, inventory. Rubber, rubber bands, there are various, if you Google just like rubber band um, set on Amazon, not Google, but search it. There are things that you can, if you close, they'll, they'll send you an attachment and that attachment can close in a door frame. So that could be your anchor point for setting up rubber bands for different pulling or curls or shoulder press or chest press. Uh, but certainly, I, the, only, the only reason I'm not saying dumbbells or kettlebells um, is because they're harder to get at the moment with supply chains being screwed up. But if you have, it doesn't even have to be a lot of weight. Having those at home are so diverse. You can do so many different things with uh, just a, a set of, or may, depending on your strength level, maybe two sets of, of dumbbells, for example. Uh, and again, you, you could modify, you could get some weight by filling a grocery bag or a backpack with books or canned goods. Okay. A yoga mat is a tremendous tool for just cushioning the floor or if you have some carpet, uh, that's that's fine too. Mm -hmm. But you really don't need, and then certainly you could go way on the higher end with, uh, in terms of spend with a $2,000 Peloton bike, bike. or yeah. um, and everything in between. So it's really up to you. and. I'd be, if anyone wants to email me after this, okay. I'd be happy to dialogue and help you kind of, it's, it's really specific to you and what you like. And maybe plugging into our diverse set of classes would be a good way to explore that. Right, right. Thank you. Exactly. It is so individual. Okay. Um, so a couple of questions on frequency of these exercises, like even that, are you going to do those types of of things daily or what's the frequency of some of these weight training things and then also what are some examples of exercises that you can do with a set of weights sure um it, or books it, or whatever it is yeah yeah um the first question about frequency of strength training is how i'll interpret that question um really depends on your goals um and there are so many ways to skin the cat but for example, there, there's an there's a exercise dynamic called uh, splitting body parts where one day you could work your back and your biceps and then the next day you could work your chest and your triceps and the day after that you could work your legs. Um, so if you keeping a rotation as such, you're really not doubling down on already sore muscles. You're moving, you're giving them days to rest um, as you hit a different muscle group the following day. Um, so it really is all up to you. Um, or like a lot of our classes are full body workouts where maybe you're going uh, one day on, one day off. Rest is a, is a very key part of, again, it depends on your goals, but whatever they may be, often uh, our very type A folks are not resting enough. Uh, I think I know some of them are on this call today. So uh, <laughs> you know, it's, we're going to give a special shout out. Well, I'm a sleeper. So I, yeah, I tell people to exercise smart and not, not overdo it. And, but back to you, I'm going to tie a lot of things to our immune systems. And to reiterate that it's true. You have to allow your body to physically rest as well. Right. Yeah. Um, exercising too much exercise during okay. exercise, you're, you're putting your body into a state of stress. Mm -hmm. And so if you're constantly exercising, you're constantly under stress, and then your body can start to produce cortisol just as if you're under mental stress, and that can eat away at your muscles and your well being and have sort of the, the counterintuitive. I've actually gotten some of our clients to make more gains by getting them to take more rest days, and they're mm -hmm. like, their, their mind is blown. So. Right? I like those mind blowing experiences, but they have to do it in order to to know that and, and learn that. Absolutely. That's funny. So the frequency does vary. How about as far as, um, losing weight specifically, there are plenty of people who are still are wanting to lose weight, to lose, uh, like undo the damage of the first few months of COVID and then heading in now into the holiday season and that. So specifically for weight loss, um, what are you, and I don't, I don't know the right balance myself in, in coaching people on 
say that cardio exercise versus the weight bearing. So can you give us some tips on an effective weight loss fitness routine? Sure. Um, again, I, I don't, I'm not trying to dodge the question, but it really is, it can't be square peg round hole in terms of what you like and what you don't like. If you're, if, if someone is telling you, you have to do spinning or Pilates or strength or weight training, and you don't like it, it's not going to last. So I would highly encourage you to find one or two things that you like, and it's okay to, to really double down on those things. Cause we want this to be a, a lifestyle and not a, a fad. Right. That's exactly the individual. Okay. That makes sense. So in other words, all of that is good and consistency is the most important or the, you know, I say consistency and frequency. In other words, not once every two weeks, you decide to exercise <laughs> and kill yourself and then don't do it again for another few weeks. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. It's um, what is, I'm a big New York Giants fan. And what is, what does Joe judge the coach say? He says, simple, but hard, like something along those lines, like the, it, it's good. You have to be consistent, which is a simple concept, but is for all, some of us hard to execute. So that's right. That's right. And be gentle on yourself. And that's, uh, I can't say that enough as well, though. It starts day by day until you make it a habit. And then over time, it does become a lifestyle. And I think it's better to, you know, have that small, the small step, tiny step approach to it. And I like to say this too, even if you're doing nothing now, it's adding five minutes a day or 10 minutes every other day is still better than nothing, right? And finding what you like. So, okay, so with weight loss, I get it. It's very personalized and individual as, as well. Um, one question that uh, I see is, is, as far as your instructor, um, I don't even know if you said, how many different instructors do you have? And do you have some that are um, over, well, uh, over 60? Like, do you have any older skewed trainers or instructors? That's a great question. Um, we have 11 different instructors that are coaching our group fitness at the time and even more that are with private clients or private groups. Uh, we do some coaching at, at companies and apartment buildings on a weekly basis. We do not have any that are over 60 at the moment, but my mom joins, she might even be on this, on this chat. She, she, uh, she joins every Wednesday morning to my strength training class. She's I won't say how old she is, but she's over, older than 60. Uh, and we have multiple participants who are. So we are very tuned in to uh, offering things for all levels. Um, we do have a wide, a very wide range from 20 to 70 plus on, on our given workout sessions. So, and especially, there's another tremendous benefit of yoga and Pilates that you're you're really, I'm not going to say you can't get hurt, but they're, they're much more um, focused on form and balance and proper strength rather than muscling through some dynamic, intense strength training exercise. Um, and people also have a misconception that yoga is just stretching. That's not, that's not true. You know, it can be, um, but there's a whole, all sorts of strength and balance incorporated as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would love it. I'd highly encourage people to check out. I do too. For the balance, that's a key factor. And I know Pilates instructors are highly trained and certified. And, and uh, one question is, uh, do you work with people with scoliosis? Do you have any, you know, and, and some of those issues? Absolutely. I've worked with a woman this morning in a private session who has scoliosis. And oh. um, us uh, coaches have just an ability to, you know, we have a dialogue with that person and also you can see how they move and what they have command of and what they don't. And as long as their form is okay and we have a, a dialogue, um, mm -hmm. there's an ability to strengthen and make sure that um, everything is being done pain-free and, and strengthening the proper areas. And we can con consort cons uh, with doctors or, or whoever we need you know, we need to to make sure the care is comprehensive fabulous oh good i'm glad i asked that um i do want to go back to our 
and I didn't do this, I apologize, some of the, the slides that we you put together and cover one second, sorry. Um, just back to this, Joe, if, um, you know, to bring it full circle to what we were talking about initially on the four pillars and giving your tips, I just wanna be conscious of time here. So um, putting up Joe's wellness tips, I wanted to do that as kind of like focus on some final reminders here and take in some, some final questions as well, but I'll let you speak to your own tips, Joe. <laughs> Sure, sure. Thanks, Susan. Um, yeah, you know, it's, um, it is a practice, you know, I would not be good if I didn't practice every day. And that doesn't mean exercise, that means addressing the four and now I call five pillars, um, trying to be as conscious all the time about what I need. Do I have access to proper nutrition? Do I have my water in front of me? What can I do to sleep more soundly? slash more, excuse me, do I need to have a tough conversation with my boss to set some boundaries? Is that going to help my stress levels, you know, or a significant other or managing relationships is part of wellness, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's how I'm feeling all day long. Um, and, you know, you know, also with the, with the posture thing is, is working from my couch and my coffee table destroying me, uh, actually, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> do I need to make a change there before, you know, I like to say that posture or poor posture is something that you're not, you know, I, it's not my phrase, this, this physical therapist, Kelly Starrett says, it's, it's kind of like a paper clip where you're, you're going to bend it, you're going to bend it, you're going to bend it, and then it finally breaks, and then you're in trouble. So don't let, don't let it break. You got to, you can unwind all these all these postures with stretching and yoga classes, but more importantly, addressing them before they start or mm -hmm. while they're happening. Um, mm -hmm. And so then, you know, making a plan often uh, is is really a, a good thing, and that's so, it's so unique. It's so individual for folks. Whether uh, you know, Susan works with a lot of people individually on nutrition. Um, we do as well, but also with, mm -hmm. you know, extra, you know, I, we, we had a private client where trying to peel the layers of wellness, we realized that her boyfriend was working in their bedroom. He was, a, he's a banker working in their bedroom on his computer till two or three in the morning while she's trying to sleep like three feet away. And it's like, he can't that we got to fix that. Um, <laughs> so, um, yes. Sleep deprivation is not good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's something Susan was just speaking to. You don't, people, especially in so many areas, they get frustrated. You don't have to be perfect. Rome was not built in a day, but small steps over time do add up. Um, taking inventory of where you are now, whether they be through photos or just journaling or, or whatnot, or conversations with someone who cares about you. Uh, mm -hmm. And then reflecting on those maybe a month later and, and every month, those are powerful tools. Uh, but don't, don't throw in the towel and say, oh, you know, I'm just not flexible or uh, I screwed up this week. I didn't do what I needed to do. No, okay, well, that's all, it's all learning, right? You know, 2020, when things go wrong, you learn from them. So that's, it's all learning. Well, we've all learned this year, completely agree. <laughs> no, it's really true. Thanks, Joe. A um, couple more topics, basically, and I love this one. This is interesting because this person writes that cholesterol, you know, as far as your health and wellness and what you need to know about, it used to be cholesterol and then it was sugar and now it's inflammation. Everybody hears about inflammation, inflammation. It's so bad for you. And um, so can you speak a little bit and you can pull in the nutrition, anything that you do or recommend both with diet and exercise for lowering inflammation? Yeah, you know, um, Susan, I might kick this back to you as a registered dietitian real quick. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Absolutely. If you don't mind. Okay. So as far as that goes, lowering stress in the body and the way the body reacts to that by producing, you know, uh, uh, 
more cortisol, as you said, and having the stress response. But diet number one, very important, is kind of basic, fruits and vegetables. I tell um, most people all the time, they simply don't get enough. And a lot of people have avoided fruit because of sugar. There's all of these misconceptions. So it's really focusing on fruits, vegetables, fiber, number one, and then good fats, such as the omega-3s, flaxseed, nuts and seeds are very powerful and anti-inflammatory. And then on the flip side, reducing added sugars as much as possible and bad fat and all those processed foods. I think that's kind of the best thing you can do for your, for your overall health. And that relates to then how you feel, how you exercise, how you sleep. So, so yeah, inflammation is a big deal and that's why it's gotten so much attention and I love to talk about it. And that's where exercise too really helps combat that and very, very important. So that was a great question. Um, okay, then there was, I mean, we could go on, there's so many different facets of health, wellness, well-being as, as we all know. Um, that said, so maybe I'll bring up something that hasn't come up yet, which is kind of tying it back to the sleep, stress, everything, people experiencing anxiety at this time. So how do you handle uh, sleep issues right now? And any tips as far as that goes, Joe? Again, related to overall lifestyle and exercise. Yeah, you know, um, there's, a, there's various things, but let me speak about maybe the hour before bed as a key time uh, all day long should not be neglected either, but I'll speak maybe a couple hours before bed. One, I screw this up sometimes. So again, you don't have to be perfect, but trying not to be so stuffed with food or alcohol or whatever it may be that you go to bed and you're just like, oh my God, you know, like I'm uncomfortably full right now. That's a trying to be mindful of if you're eating a later meal, that it's a smaller meal or eating a, a big meal that is just a, maybe three to four hours before bed. Mm -hmm. um, trying to eliminate screen time. You know, all of us, including myself, are addicted to the phone at this point. But, you know, in that last hour of the day, especially if you have a partner uh, at home, um, trying to put the phones away. You know, one of the things I like best about teaching is that the phone, my, my phone is away. I'm focused. I'm very present on either exercising or teaching. Uh, it's, it's really actually quite powerful, that, that uh, you know, a way to steady and calm the mind. Mm -hmm. um, lower light before bed, um, maybe some breath work meditation or stretching and or stretching before bed um, can really help. I actually have this. Um, let me go get it. It's, I'll be back in one second. This is absolutely. This is just the pillow, but I have like uh, there's also a whole like mat for your torso. But I've got this like acupuncture <laughs> mat that um, it's kind of like acupuncture at home, and you don't pierce the skin. But these are pretty sharp, prickly things here that you lay on, and it takes like an acupuncture-like effect where it's creating a bunch of blood flow uh, to where, to your back and neck where you're laying on it. That's a pillow that you lie on? Yeah. That's hard to see. If you had a re I've never seen that or heard of that. That sounds fantastic to me. Had no idea that exists, <laughs> quite honestly. It's kind of like the weighted blankets. I get that question a lot. And I just put a really heavy pillow on myself. I'm, I'm, you know, if anybody has sleep issues, that works for me. <laughs> But that's incredible. No, honestly. And does that um, get, as you said, more blood flow going to the to the muscles in the back or wherever you lie on it? Exactly right. Um, and it's it's super relaxing. And, mm -hmm. and I thought when I bought it, like I'm not associated with the brand at all. Um, I thought it might be like a placebo effect. Oh, will this work? I don't know. Uh, I saw it on Instagram, actually. Um, but I would 100% highly recommend it. Um, 10, 12 minutes, maybe up to 20 if you got it, but it just actually really calms down any tension in your back or neck. Um, mm -hmm. If you just search like acupuncture mat on Amazon, mm -hmm. um, there are some nice models, you know, just read the reviews. Um, it's kind of a, a commodity at this point. They're not that hard to um, 
manufacturer, I wouldn't think. So uh, nice. that's okay. a really good way to calm the body and mind before bed as well. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, well, I was trying to advance to my final slide and make sure I've got no additional questions out there. And um, I'm not sure how I, just trying to get to my last slide. I apologize, everybody. I'm having my own issues with, <laughs> with my PowerPoint this evening, apparently. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody has the contact information for you, Joe. Just give me one more second. I'm not sure. I uh, just want to uh, put up our final slide here this evening. Why am I? I don't know. Sorry. That's okay. If you there we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> my own stress management, I apologize in any case. I, I just wanna make sure that um, following this webinar, members, clients, anybody who's listening knows how to reach out to you and also find the, the free virtual classes that you offer weekly. And because I think that's just a tremendous benefit and a great way to get people started. So um, yeah, because of time, I also, want to start to wrap it up and I'll give you a chance to give any final last minute tips and tricks, but I want to thank you so much for being here. I think it's just such an imperative time to give people as much information and support as we can during this really challenging time as we know, and it can't be overstated in any way, shape or form. So working on these daily, right? Daily lifestyle uh, habits, in order for it to become you know, a part of a healthy overall lifestyle, I think is just really why we're here. And I want everybody to know that from my side, I'm, I wanna thank everybody for being here. You can reach out to me as well at any point, also for the personalized health coaching that we offer. Um, Joe, go ahead. I'd love to hear your final word of the evening. Yeah. Um... I just uh, thank you so much, uh, Susan and Sean, for having me. And, um, you know, it's, it's true that I think we all in the, in, the th in the health and wellness space, we all kind of do what we do because we enjoy helping people. So uh, if anyone wants to email me after or connect with us at Bach Fitness on Instagram or our website is bbach.com, B-E-B-A-C-H.com, which is where you can sign up for the free classes. There is no no trial periods, no gimmicks. They're just free. Uh, we, when, when COVID started and um, when uh, George Floyd was killed, uh, we just wanted to give people an opportunity. Hey, if you need help, if you need to escape whatever for an hour, come work out, come, come de-stress. So uh, nice. we, we would love to see you in class. Fabulous. Thank you. It's such a great offering. Um, I can't thank you enough for being here, Joe. And um, I, Hope that everybody stays healthy, healthy and through these boosts their immune system, all of that, and reaches out for any follow-up support that you might need, right? We're headed into probably some pretty wild winter months as well. That's all I can say. So we need to brace ourselves, support ourselves and each other. And yeah, again, well, I would love to see you here again another time, Joe. And to everybody out there, thank you again for joining in and, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we'll talk soon. Okay. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.